How's it going, everybody? Gabriel Santiago here. So this is the Speaking of Harmony podcast, and this is episode 11. One more time, thank you so much for the feedback, all the questions. Keep them coming. And now it's been great to be interacting with you guys. So we got a awesome episode today. I'm going to be talking about some really cool stuff. Before we go into that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the little, you know, little bell thing over here, notifications, and this is all my social media stuff. And uh, please sign up for the mailing list as well. It's very important. So we'll be connected through my email. I send all kinds of stuff all the time. So please do so. So on today's episode, we're going to be diving in, you know, something that I have been really talking about this whole time, which is it relates to hashtag voice leading, right? So that's some really cool things that we can do within the chord. They can help you, help you, you know, with that, right? Um, basically, what we're going to be talking about today is applying movement within the chord, right? Because as I said before, and I'll be uh, reinforcing this all the time, that for me, harmony is movement, right? It has to be moving all the time, meaning the voices, right? If you think about harmony in a horizontal way, as I have been reinforcing from time to time, meaning all the time, is that it's got to have movement, right? If you see things horizontally, things are moving, right? So to do that, there's a lot of things you can do. So one of the things I'm going to talk about today specifically is how to create this movement or at least keep that hint of movement within a chord, right? When you have a, a situation where, you know, the chord is in, in a progression, this the chord stays for a long time, Let's say if you have like a you know A major and stuff, right? You won't be just like you know. You can't do that for sure. But if you wanna start applying some more, you know, some more interesting things, meaning moving the harmony a little bit more and still remain the same chord, the few things you can do. And one of the things is what we're gonna be talking about today, which is basically within the chord itself, you can apply movement. Uh, within the voices to give the impression of movement or to actually be moving within the voices, right? A uh, good example is, is something I'm going to say is like A major, for instance, if you have this chord um, I took as an example, right? So if you, sw if you just swap the major seven for the six, it's already movement. You see, for instance, this is A major nine, right? So the major seven is this. If I swap that for the six, and I keep moving from one, one from one to another, it's movement. You're generating movement already. So you have an inner voice already being enhanced and highlighted within the chord. So this is how it sounds. You see, it's just very simple, very simple thing, but. You just apply movement, very subtle movement, but it's there. So you don't have that fixed vertical thing because there is this voice, there is moving within the chord, see? See? And you can keep finding those voices within the chord. So if I go to um, A minor from that A major, like... very simple thing but very effective you're playing movement within the chord right so if I go for instance from a major let's say if I keep going I go to D D minor right right D minor 9 or whatever right I can do that the same the same way right so I can do that 
with the major seven and the six as well, like. Just to take a note from the A chord, right? So that note underneath is gonna be the one moving after when I go to D minor. And I can continue with that same voice with the other one, just having a third thing, like a major third, a minor third in this case, right? So that voice that was moving here. Continue moving that when I go back to A. Then I move. And this voice. And then. So combining both, you have these two voices doing this. So on one chord, first time, this voice is is here, it's static, right, this one is moving, and then the next chord, this one resolves, and this one moves, but when I come back, both move, see how it is, how it's gonna sound, The, the next chord when the A major comes back, I'm not really thinking anymore of A major like a uh, like a structure like a vertical thing. And this is A major with nine with this. I'm just thinking of these voices, and they fit over this A pedal, right? Major whatever, and then the open strings, and then I just let this these voices move. Right? I'm not even playing the third of the chord here, you know? There's no uh, C sharp on A after I come back, see? Then it's not even there. But it's still hooked to that movement because I was moving the voices and you're following the voices, you know, with your ears, of course. So it really doesn't matter anymore. If the chord has a third voice, because I'm not thinking about it anymore. I'm just thinking about the voices, right? So this is an ultimate example of hashtag voice leading, right? It's total voice leading over here in practical terms, in practical mode, practical mode right now. So you can see, and this is only within the chord, right? I'm just taking the chord, some inner voices, and moving them around, swapping one for another, and you have this kind of movement, right? <laughs> Super cool. I love that. And I use this all the freaking time, right? So you can have that with all kinds of chords, right? Of course, you just um, be curious and just start exploring all the kinds of resolutions you can do, right? There's like, you know, the famous ones when you have like an ultra chord, let's say um, like an A7, uh, flat 13 or sharp 5, whatever you want to call it, you know, and you have the, the sharp 9. Of course, resolve that. Do this little movement with the flat, the sharp five, the sharp nine rather, and the flat nine, right? Right? It's a pretty common movement, right? Right? But it's within this this subject, right? Moving voices within the chord, swapping one for the other, and thus applying movement, right? You can do that with the you know the the classic like thirteen flat thirteen descending thing, like right. 
but you can do for instance while in uh, having something on top like a flat nine for instance no So always applying movement within the chord. So finding these tensions, tension notes, and how you can swap them, right? I've talked about the major seven going to the six, right? The minor on the minor chord, also the major seven going to the six, or the regular like the minor seven going to the six. It doesn't matter. Just like you start exploring and starting to create in these movements, right? Right? Another example that you can move stuff like on a dominant uh, chord. Like for instance, this case you have the 13 here, and you can do a movement like this, right? Just back into the fifth, right? As I was saying seconds ago, right? You can also do the uh, sharp 11 which is right here I can descend that to into the third right and then here's the cool thing as I did on the other chord on the A major D minor you can combine both voices and create this double line this this melody subtle melody that's doubled but then I have the 13 and the sharp 11 together descending chromatically so look how cool is the effect like right? like the great Cesar Camargo Mariano Brazilian piano player he loves that movement he does all the time that's where I got it from by the way the great Cesar and then you can finish up the line over here with it right sharp 11 going back to the third chromatically and then resolving to the ninth and 13 going down to the fifth and resolving to the sharp 11 so we have right so do the rhythm we just pick whatever rhythm you want to do but the important is the movement how cool is that? And you can put a note on top, for instance. Like I can do a chord like with the ninth on top, like this kind of chord. So I can do you see how cool that note keeps on top, which is not a voice by the way, but it's just like uh, idle right now, right? Or I can move same chord see that's so cool man so a, a good example of that is you can do like right away for instance this song uh, desafinado right for instance you can do it right here excellent an example right so Just subtle but so beautiful, just so hip, man. See? See? Man, this is so cool. And that those are the kind of comments and kind of melodies that start to show up when you let it sing, right? When you start seeing things horizontally. So whenever a melody is idle, in this case, it's a long note, right? And I'm gonna comment on it, see? I'm making a comment. And then you go from there, right? This is just so cool, so cool. I'm gonna give an example now, now of a, a song, right? That you can have all these things happening, right? So how important it is to think of the voice leading, hashtag voice leading, right? When you're doing this stuff. Um, 
all these progressions I'm gonna play, there's gonna have some, some movement involved within the chord, right? So this song is called Vivo Sonhando, right? By Jobim. And I think Vinicius wrote the lyrics for that. Um, Dreamer in English, that's the name of this song. It goes like this. Right? song. Now let's see what we can do with that. Using this principle. We're applying this principle right now. Like I'm gonna use a pedal here over this E flat. So I'm gonna keep playing a B. A G rather, right? So we'll be doing a like E flat major 7 over B, right? The third in the bass. So I'm gonna do sound as a C minor with the bass on G you can also see the chord like this so then it'll be the 7 6 right moving but that's the same voice right doesn't matter if in E flat is the fifth moving here or if in C minor is the seven and the six the same thing another reason because I don't care about the chords I'm thinking about the voices see playing both voices see how it sounds see and then both voices playing double each other right example of the thing I showed in the, in the beginning, right? Carry on, then we're gonna do this. So what I did, I did. Check it out. So I, I keep I kept the voice result on the fifth, right? And then I resolve in the flat nine of E7. And then I put flat nine with a 13. And then I arpeggio I just arpeggiated the chord, man. And then I create this line that I can resolve in A minor. And then on B in the top, right? So, check it out. Ooh. How cool is that, huh? <laughs> See? So, so much stuff you can do with that. Just if you start, you know, thinking horizontally in within the voices of the chord. Well. 
keep going, right? Then here we have A7, D7, back to G major, right? And then we start the turn. But here we're gonna do all the stuff we did it before, so. the chord like that I keep I can keep going with that resolution and do and keep these voices in you know going to the next chord because I'm, I'm really like paying attention to these voices so I can do D 13 sauce right and then I can resolve the third with a flat 9 and keep the 13 so I can do And then instead of going into G major, which is where you're supposed to be, then you do the appoggiatura diminish that I talked in the last episode. See how cool it is. Then you resolve. Oh man, that's so cool. See how, it's, it's how, how it sounds like. Combining less, less with uh, yesterday's episode, right? The diminished appoggiatura chord, then resolving to G major, right? So another thing you can do is a different approach, right? Because we we kind of went on with this voice, like. That's what we, we're dealing with. Now let's do the, the other chromatic, the same chromatic thing. So we can do. Uh, right? That thing you can do here too, right? Using the 13 and flat and sharp 11 too. Then you can go. Instead of doing E flat major to come back, I can do F sus and I can do a thing from past uh, episode, the Herbie thing, right? I can do it here like. See the Herbie thing? Woo. Right? Then it can carry on, right? Those are things you can do. But then, you know, I didn't, I didn't stop here. Cause then there's so much stuff you can do, like uh, we are harmonic, you know, we harmonize and stuff. And I, I did that the second time, I'll show you. But on this case, I'm re harmonizing, you know, the, that, that section, but I am keeping in mind a note that is like present in all the chords. Again, I am thinking of the voice, I'm thinking of a voice that needs to be kept on top, right? In this case, it would be the D voice. Check out the, how I re harm this because. Harmonies. Right, and it goes here. But over here, that's where I be, be harm with D on top all the time. So see how it sounds. I'm here. So instead of going to 
E flat, I did the derivative, right? Instead of going uh, borrowed six degree, I went to borrowed minor four, right? So I did. And then instead of coming back to one, I went to the sixth degree, to the relative. E minor. But then before that, I articulated the dominant of the sixth, which will be B, and then I alter it. Because all of them, the D is on top. Check it out. You see? And then... So the D was the element that was connecting all the chords. Again, in this case, I'm not moving the voice. I'm actually keeping the voice. But that voice is the sort of the motivator of me to apply all these substitutions to the harmony that was in place before, right? See, I'm still being uh, driven by voice leading, hashtag voice leading, right? So those are the cool principles you can do, man, and there's so much to talk about this stuff. I'll definitely be covering them, you know, in next episodes and the following episodes because there's so much you can do with these little things. You know, these tiny details are so important and so effective, man. I just, I just love it. I can stay here for hours talking about this stuff, but I'll, I'll, I'll finish the, this episode today. You know, really saying thank you so much for you guys for the support and for checking it out. You know, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the little bell thing notifications. This is all my social media stuff. Don't forget to sign up for the mailing list because I got something cooking coming up. You know, you be notified and, and be aware of what's going on. Sign up the mailing list, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'll finish up playing a little bit more of this song for you guys. Vivo Soyando, Dreamer. Thank you so much. Thank you.